we, we, we followed trends in calcium supplementation in the elderly and really in the fact that they weren't really impacting, um, uh, you know, they weren't impacting um, bone, bone density. And, and so osteopenic patients that were put on high doses of calcium still became osteoporotic. That's right. And, and, and it's the vitamin D. <laughs> yeah, vitamin D and K two. Like, um, I mean, that was another one. You know, we we it, it was twenty. Did you measure nutrient levels in these populations? Um, we didn't measure nutrient levels, and, and you know, if I had known then what I know now, mm. um, I think we probably would have mm. measured yeah. nutrient levels. But you could you could surmise from the data because you could see their diet, their lifestyle, alcohol consumption, the medications that they were on, and you could actually follow certain clinical deficiencies. Like vitamin D3 was a big one for us. We would see clinical deficiencies in vitamin D3. And I'm talking like single digit, low double digit D3, not- not That's not bad. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. And you would be- It's common. Surprised how many yeah. people have that level of yeah. deficiency no, in, in, in D3. Um, so they would have these long running clinical deficiencies in vitamin D3, let's say, um, nanogram per deciliter between seven and uh, 25, you know, even below the lowest threshold for most labs, which will be 30, 200. Um, and I still think 30 is clinically yeah, deficient. But, definitely. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but um, you would see these, these very low levels of vitamin D3 for years and years and years in the medical record. And then eventually the, the, the patient would present to a primary care physician with rheumatoid arthritis-like symptoms. Mm -hmm. and, and I make sure that I say that correctly because they didn't have rheumatoid arthritis. So take this patient that had clinical deficiency in vitamin D3 and they present to their primary care and they start describing the symptoms. Mm. You know, my, my soles of my feet are sore and achy when I get out of bed in the morning mm. to walk to the bathroom and take my first pee. My ankles just ache. It takes me 45 minutes to get the motor going. You know, in the, over the last few years, it's moved from my knees now to my hips and low back. I'm really stiff across the shoulders and, 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 and lately it's you know, been hard for me to make up a fist, like a tight fist. You would be shocked how many primary carers would just say, you know, Mark, you've got rheumatoid arthritis. And take this fifty thousand dollar year drug. Yeah, it's no RA factors, your, no yeah. sed rates, no no diagnostic work. Well, to they call it that. zero negative rheumatoid arthritis. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what they call it. <laughs> I'm adopting that saying now. No, it's a, um, it's a, it's a well known. It's an actually thing. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so we, Check it out. we knew about it. We just didn't know the name of it then. <laughs> and so they would, they would say, you know, we're just, the good news for you is we're going to put you on something called a corticosteroid. You're going to take this oral steroid and everything's going to be fine. And, uh, so methotrexate, whatever, whatever the corticosteroid was. And what we realized in the record, um, because we were looking at, uh, hundreds of thousands of patient records was that if you started a corticosteroid, you had six years and one day until you were having a joint replacement. Because initially they-, they, they, they Steroids definitely are not good. They cause osteoporosis, they you know, degrade your bones, they can cause avascular necrosis of the hip. I mean, they, they, they're pretty bad. Yeah, take. and the avascular necrosis of the hip is what's leading to the hip fractures, the femoral head they, fractures. They, they, they basically the means the blood just flow stops to the hip and then the hip yeah, that artery that, that, that goes yeah. in the femoral head is is compromised, or, um, and and now you get no blood flow, and then you get that osteoporotic condition in in the, one of the highest load areas of the body, and, yeah. and and you know most people think that grandma fell and broke her hip, but her hip broke and then she fell. It's yeah. an important distinction, right? To, they definitely can happen when, for you know, sure. The fracture causing the fall rather than the fall causing the yeah. fracture. Yeah. And that was one of the reasons we called that the triad of death. And I know you're really familiar with that hip fractures and their propensity to accelerate mortality, but it's it wasn't the hip fracture that accelerated. And j just to finish the D3 example, so here's a nutrient deficiency, yeah. clinical deficiency in this. Now now they're now they're on a corticosteroid. Um, it was so accurate that I would advance your age, artificially advance your age, six years and one day and I would schedule the joint replacement for you. And then as soon as I scheduled the joint replacement, I would begin to reduce your, at that age, I would begin to reduce your ambulatory profile, how, how well you ambulate. And as you reduced ambulation, what we realized was as you reduced mobility, you would bring in all of the diseases that yeah, begin to exacerbate. Yeah, less exercise, more disease, yeah. It, 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 it's, an, it's a direct correlation. And uh, I always say, if you don't move, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good one. <laughs> I say aging is the aggressive pursuit of comfort, but that's um, you know, the more more aggressively we pursue comfort, the faster we age. Yeah. And so, yeah. Um, you know, even even as I, I was leading, pretty comfortable, Gary. I don't know. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not going to stay here, brother. So, so now they have this clinical deficiency in D3. They've been put on a corticosteroid. Um, I've advanced their age artificially six years in one day. I've reduced their ambulatory profile. And now I bring in, the, the, you know, our algorithm would start to bring in all the diseases that exacerbate yep. with re reduced mobility. And then what you would see is we could predict not only the onset of, uh, but the severity of and how quickly you would succumb mm. to a condition. Yeah. So when you start to rewind that back, and this person died early of a disease that they never should have had mm -hmm. because of mobility that was reduced because of an operation that wasn't was not necessary because of a medication that wasn't required because of a condition that didn't exist. Yeah. Had they taken five or nine thousand IUs, ten thousand IUs of vitamin D three daily with a little K two, um, and applied a load to their bones, um, that trajectory would have been completely That's different. True. Something as simple as that. That's true. I mean, I'm just thinking, you know, we had vaccine mandates. I think we should have vitamin D mandates. I totally I mean, agree. I think, you know, we I just, totally agree. Because I, you know, I actually shared this data with some people during the uh, administration around how serious it was it, for COVID if you had low vitamin D. You would Second get, leading cause of morbidity in COVID. Yeah, you would Second get more cause. likely to end up in the hospital and die if you had low vitamin D. And from the Israeli data, if your vitamin D was over 50, and the reference range is 20 to 30, depending on the lab, mm -hmm. if it was over 50, there was nobody who died. If you love that last video, you're gonna love the next one. Check it out here.